In this video, the world-famous Nikon P1000 goes head-to-head -head against Sony's RX10 Mark IV. Still in Sony's lineup, the RX10 Mark IV Super Zoom camera has a zoom ratio of 24 to an incredible 600 millimeters, but that pales in comparison to the Nikon's 24 to 3000 millimeter reach. Can't decide on which one to get? Then this video is for you. Okay, before I tell you what this video is, let me first tell you what it's not. It's not a detailed review of each of the two cameras. I have two separate videos going into a lot of details of the RX10 Mark IV and the P1000 with examples and detailed review of the features, etc. So be sure to check that out. What this video is, is a direct comparison of the two. So if you have one of the cameras and thinking about getting the other one, or maybe you're deciding on each of these cameras, this might be the video that's very helpful for you. I'm gonna go into a lot of the physical characteristic differences, but in addition to that, photo examples you're gonna see, video examples you're gonna see. We're gonna compare astrophotography. We'll compare the stabilization of both cameras. How do they compare in low light? What about in tough lighting conditions? And bokeh, and can they do portraits? Actually, the inspiration for this video came when I was testing the RX10 Mark IV in Central Park. Using the high-powered zoom to people watch, which I sometimes do, when I noticed this chick looked like she was testing her own camera and looking at me. And she seemed a little pissed about what was going on and soon a confrontation occurred. What do you think you were doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just testing my Sony RX10 uh, Mark IV. It's not a little creepy spying on someone. But soon enough, we worked it out and then came to an agreement. This? It's an Nikon P1000. So do you think your one inch sensor can be this one? Well, what do you say we give it a shot? Yeah, I'd love to. Let's do it. Now stay tuned, that challenge is coming up in a few minutes, and we're also gonna challenge you too if you can tell the difference between these two cameras when shooting portraits. But right now, let's look at some physical differences between the two cameras. By now you know the Sony has a bigger one-inch sensor compared to the Nikon's small cell phone size sensor. The Nikon has a fully articulating rear screen while the Sony's just tilts up. And the weight difference is also very apparent between the two cameras. But what's most apparent is that 600 versus 3000 millimeter zoom. So how does that zoom difference translate in the real world? Well, here's the Sony's RX10 Mark IV zooming into its maximum 25 times or 600 millimeters. But if your goal is to see a goal, then the Nikon P1000 is the way to go. Again, here is the Sony's 600 millimeter reach. And here's a photo at full zoom on the Sony at 600. Okay, so first I'm gonna shoot this street sign with the P1000 at 600 millimeters to match the Sony's 600 millimeters. So we just wanna compare apples to apples. 600 millimeters to 600 millimeters is that's the maximum the Sony can reach. And here you can see the difference between the two cameras. The Sony looks a little brighter. This makes sense because at its full zoom, the Sony is at f4.0 and compare that to the Nikon at 600 millimeters around f5.0. So don't be surprised at times, especially at full zoom, the Sony may look a bit brighter. This is as far as we can push the Sony, but when we push the Nikon at 3000 millimeters, you can even see the ridges in the green sign. The difference in reach is huge as you can see, but you don't wanna make your audience nauseous if the stabilization isn't good in these cameras. Here is the Sony RX10 Mark IV's stabilization at its full zoom. Compare that to the Nikon at the same zoom range, 600 millimeters, again, apples to apples. You can even see an image quality difference as well. Nikon looks a little less contrasty and sharp, but the smaller sensor in the Nikon may be producing a smoother image. Let's take a look at another scene going from full wide to full zoom on the RX10 Mark IV and pay particular note to the stabilization as well. It's always best if you can be on a tripod, but I'm hand holding this just to show what the stabilization is like. Now, Sony has a clear image zoom feature, and this is what it looks like at 900 millimeters. But for this test, let's just compare the optical zoom back at 600 millimeters, and you really are zoomed in. Looking with my eye from this vantage point, I would not have noticed the police officer dumping out this liquid in the street. And here is the Nikon at its full zoom. 
Remember, I am hand holding this, so this is quite impressive, even though the image is a bit hazier, but it does get a little clearer and sharper as you pull back out and you can see the incredible range of focal length. Let's get out of the haze of the city into the suburbs. And here's another example, the Nikon at 600 millimeters. And at times these cameras will really look very close. As I jump to the Sony, it really looks very close. Sony exposed a little bit brighter here in this image, maybe overexposed a bit actually. It's always good if you have a way to brace yourself for better stability. Do you know which camera shot this? Well, this is the Nikon. And to prove it to you, here is the Nikon at 3000 millimeters. I want you to watch the autofocus though. At times it back focuses on those trees and loses the face. It will do that sometimes, but this is handheld again. Wish I could read lips. And here's a still shot of the Nikon at its full zoom compared to 600 millimeters with the Nikon. Are either of these two cameras a good choice for portraits? Do you think you can tell the difference in a blind test which camera is which when we show you two different portraits side by side? Get a pen and paper. That's pretty simple, really. Let's see if it is. Here's picture one and here's picture two. Which camera shot which? The answer is... Let's try another one. Here's picture three versus picture four. How you doing so far? One more, picture five versus picture six. Evidently not so simple. I hope you're getting something out of this video. There is more on the way, so stay tuned. More information to come comparing these two cameras I just ask you to take a second. I know everybody says this, but hitting that like button really does help support the channel. And I advise you to subscribe as well because there's gonna be more videos on super zoom cameras coming out shortly. So I think you may find that interesting. Here's a few more shots for a point of reference, the Sony at 600 and the Nikon at 600. But at 1500 and 2000 and at 3000 millimeters for the Nikon, well, there really is no comparison. While out shooting, I saw this interesting effect of how the sun was reflecting off of this smokestack. And I used the zoom on the Sony RX10 Mark IV to get in tight. You can see the aperture shifting and sort of being confused by this scene. And look how much closer you can get with an Icon P1000. The autofocus was really going wonky. So I had to go into manual focus for this scene, which you'll have to do a lot on the Nikon, especially at that full zoom. Again, this is being handheld. Let's take a look now at the low light differences. Here's the Nikon P1000. All this video was shot at 4K 30, by the way. This is in deep twilight, seeing the city lights, car headlights. It looks pretty good, actually. But look at the Sony. It looks like it was taken at a completely different time of day, but I can assure you they were only taken a few seconds apart. And when you look at the Nikon again, it's much darker and you can see a lot more noise. And here's a photo of the same scene with the Nikon and with the Sony. Again, big brightness difference. Now it's completely dark out, just the city lights. This is the RX10 Mark IV at its full zoom, 600 millimeters. And you really can see a surprising amount considering that it's completely nighttime. Not true with the Nikon. It is completely obliterated. You can hardly see anything. I redid the test because I wanted to be sure about this. In this low light scene, the Nikon would not even autofocus, so I set to manual focus. This is a low light scene of a statue of an Egyptian cat, and here it is on the Sony, and yes, this is the exact same lighting conditions. The difference is really dramatic between these two cameras, especially at full zoom. Let's move from low light to astrophotography. Will you be over the moon with the Nikon? Here it is at 600 millimeters compared to the Sony at 600. Nikon now can get a lot tighter, however, and you can see a real big difference. You can see a lot more craters. Here's the RX10 in video mode, and I want you to notice that when you change the aperture in astrophotography, it really sharpens up the image. Clear image zoom is engaged here as well to get even tighter. I go into more detail in my full review on the RX10 about clear image zoom, but I want you to know that it exists and it's only uses a 
better algorithm than digital zoom. Here is the moon mode with the P1000, which really sets up the camera's exposure properly to optimize video for the moon. And you can take a look and see how sharp and clear it looks. And at 3000 millimeters, you're so tight, you actually got to move back to get the entire moon in. And here it is during the day. Pretty impressive. Don't be surprised to get really cool shots like this of the moon from full wide to zooming all the way in. The advantage of shooting the moon when it's not full is that you can see better detail in the shadows and you can really get those craters in view. And the incredible zoom of the P1000 makes this an outstanding camera for astrophotography. Here is how the biggest and brightest planet in the night sky, Jupiter, looks with the RX10 Mark IV. And here is how it looks with the Nikon. The image is just too small in the Sony footage, but with the P1000 in Final Cut Pro or another video editing program with sharpening and cropping into the image, yes, you can see the bands of Jupiter. How about we put the shoe on the other foot and have the model be the photographer and the photographer be the model? At first I was a little uncomfortable in my new role, but I think I got the hang of it pretty quick and so did she. Hey, if it doesn't work out in YouTube, maybe this can be a second profession for me. You are the most unattractive man I have ever met in my entire life. You are physically repulsive, intellectually retarded, you're morally reprehensible, vulgar, insensitive, selfish, stupid. You have no taste, a lousy sense of humor, and you smell. So this portion of the video is being brought to you by Sure Antiperspirant. Of course, you want to be sure as to which Super Zoom to buy. When shooting video in bright, sunny conditions, both the Sony RX10 Mark IV and the Nikon P1000 look surprisingly close, both clear and sharp, with a bit more contrast, I noted, on the Nikon. Another scene when bright outdoor conditions, video looks nice and clear and sharp on the Nikon. Look at that, I loaf you and I need you. Isn't that a great ad for a bakery store? With the Sony RX10 Mark IV, video looks good as well. You'll notice a little more color saturation on the Sony and a little more contrast in this scene as well. Here are two shots at full wide angle of the city with the Nikon and the Sony, and you can look at them both back and forth, and you may not be able to see a difference, both very close here. Now let's go from easy lighting to tough lighting and test the dynamic range of these sensors, a bigger sensor versus a smaller sensor. This type of scene is tough to get a proper exposure with the sky the way it is and keeping the buildings properly exposed. Comparing the Sony with the Nikon, they're both fairly close in terms of exposure, the Sony a little more saturation, Lowering the exposure by one-third of value, the Sony is slightly better in the sky, but they're pretty close. Okay, so in this test, we're going to test the dynamic range of the camera and see how the sensor size of the camera might make a difference in how it handles tough lighting situations. Now, I'm standing in a typical place where at this time of day, the sun is literally shining directly on my face. I can barely see. The lighting is really harsh against my relatively fair skin. So we're going to compare the Nikon, what you're seeing now, versus the RX10 Mark IV. And here we have the RX10 Mark IV. I would add that both are at 4K 30. Both are set to standard profile, no picture controls, no effects. Uh, exposure set flat to zero. So we really try to have apples and apples. I try to frame this uh, as well as possible. So we're comparing a small one over 2.3 inch sensor size or so to a full one inch sensor in tough lighting conditions. In this type of scene, it's highly recommended to lower the exposure. So let's drop it to minus one. Okay, this is with the exposure down to minus one on the RX10 Mark IV. Again, the sun shining directly in my face. And we will do the same thing on the Nikon now, lowering the exposure value by one. And now here we are on the Nikon with the exposure down, minus one as well. So let's take a look and see how these cameras can do after we make the appropriate adjustments. The adjustments are there. The cameras do have manual control, so might as well use them when the situation warrants it. Let's test the built-in mics of both cameras and compare them. He loves me, loves me not. Loves me, loves me not. He loves me, 
loves me not. Loves me. Loves me not. So one of the biggest advantages of a larger sensor in a camera is that better depth of field, that bokeh, that blurry background. Let's compare bokeh now. At 80 millimeters, here's the Nikon, here's the Sony. They are pretty close. The Sony is a little more blur in the background, starting to become more apparent at 125. Here's the Nikon and the Sony, it's much creamier. As you extend that zoom, the bokeh becomes more apparent. Here, the Sony, the bricks are very undefined, much more defined in the P1000. At 200 millimeters, you can still make out the clear definition of the bricks, whereas the Sony, they are definitely more blurred in the house in the background. At 235 millimeters, you can still see a big difference in the bokeh. So let's talk about now what the Sony and Nikon both have in common. And what is really obvious at first is the viewfinders and both cameras are excellent. Really clear, really sharp, really bright. And you should be using the viewfinders more than the LCD screen, especially for long zoom shots for stability. Both cameras also get high marks in their flexibility of shooting in RAW or JPEG in a variety of formats and aspect ratios. Both cameras also are equipped with pop-up flashes. Hey, and that's important, especially outdoors. How would you like a picture like this? versus this. Both cameras allow you to tweak the image quality to your liking. You can do that in the menus of the Nikon. The Sony calls that creative style, but they both accomplish the same goal. An often overlooked feature is the macro function that both cameras have, allowing you to get up close and personal inches away from the lens with both cameras. Both bridge cameras have only one lens, so you don't have to change lenses and clean your sensor or carry heavy bags. On the negative side, both cameras are restricted to a 30 minute record limit. And you're gonna need to make sure you have plenty of batteries with you because the batteries are really small and weak. And it would also be prudent in both cases to invest in a travel charger, which you can get relatively cheaply on Amazon. Now, let's look at some of the advantages the Nikon has over the RX10 Mark IV. The first is something called 4K Photo. You can actually shoot photos while taking video by pressing the shutter button. And here's some examples of it, and they come out pretty good. The Nikon, you can shoot time-lapse video in 1080p, and it stitches it together for you in camera. In the Sony, you can't shoot those 4K photos, and the camera does not have an intervalometer, so you can't do time-lapse unless you have an outside app. The Nikon gives you this double exposure effect and this nightscape and light trails effect, allowing you to be a little more creative with these built-in effects in camera. The P1000 offers a variety of speed up or speed down effects, including slow motion in 720p. The RX10 does offer slow motion in 1080p, but it's complicated to use and only a few seconds of slow motion are allowed. There are other frame rates with much reduced quality. And here when I tested it, the exposure was all whacked out. It's much more awkward than the Nikon and it takes time to render. And if you're price conscious, the Nikon is significantly cheaper than the Sony. Now let's talk about the advantages of the Sony over the Nikon P1000. Well, physically, it's got a very nice lighted top dial, which the Nikon does not have. The RX10 also has a very professional clickable aperture ring, which can come in very handy. Focal length indications on the lens, a focus limiter, and silent shooting are some additional nice features of the RX10. Both cameras shoot a maximum of 4K 30 video, but with the Sony, you can adjust your codex with more precision. The Sony also gives you a number of picture profiles in case you're interested in color grading your videos. Perhaps one of the biggest advantages the Sony has over the Nikon is the autofocus system, which is really advanced and sophisticated. As an example here, it really locks onto your subject and rarely misses. There's even a touch to focus feature, which works in video as well, and it really creates very cool focus pulls. If you're into high speed burst shooting, well then the Sony's 24 frames per second really beats out the Nikon, which shoots about seven to 10 frames per second. The RX10 Mark IV has a side door specifically for the SD card, as opposed to the bottom of the camera where the battery sits with the Nikon P1000. And when using a tripod, this is an inconvenience. Now, the Nikon P1000 is equipped with a microphone port, but when where is the headphone port? With the RX10 Mark IV, it comes with both. So is the RX10 Mark IV worth the extra price over the P1000? 
Well, I would say if low light is going to be a factor for you, then yes, because that's really where I saw the biggest difference between these two cameras. In bright sunny situations, the difference is much less. The Sony does provide a bit of a more fuller picture, a little more saturation, a little more depth to the image. But of course, that's gonna be the difference with the larger sensor, of course. The Sony is certainly smaller and more compact compared to the P1000. And if you're gonna be out for several hours, you're going to feel that difference. So that might be a factor if you don't wanna lug around a heavy camera all day. Of course, the Nikon has a much greater zoom, the 3000 compared to the 600. But in real world shooting situations, how often do you really need to go over 600 millimeters? Is it more of a novelty? And don't forget also the Sony has that clear image zoom, which gets you to 900 millimeters in video and 1200 millimeters in photo. So the extra reach of the, the Nikon, you have to decide whether that extra reach really is worth carrying the extra size and weight. But if you're doing wildlife photography or astrophotography where you really need that extra reach, then it may very well be. It really depends on what you can use the camera for, what your needs are, and what you're willing to compromise on. And naturally, if price is a factor, the Nikon is considerably less expensive than the RX10 Mark IV, which is really holding its value after all these years. And you know what? If you can't decide, maybe just get them both. What the hell? If you haven't already done so, please be sure to check out my full review on the Nikon P1000 with even more video and photo examples, tips and tricks on the camera, how to use it, and you really get an in-depth look at the camera. Also have a video on the RX10 Mark IV where I take a deep dive into this great super zoom. I'd like to give a special shout out to Shannon Murphy. She's a great actress and a real pleasure to work with. I hope this video gave you some insight as to which camera may be for you, the RX10 Mark IV or the P1000. If so, we certainly would appreciate a like and please subscribe because there's gonna be more videos coming up on super zoom cameras and comparisons. Our channel is growing, so that support greatly is appreciated. Comment as well, I do answer. And look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon.